Hey everyone, Chris here from Soterra Media. Many moons ago, I began my journey learning VFX. One of the first VFX techniques I ever learned was how to do the lightsaber effect, which at that time I did an After Effects with the Saber plugin from Video Copilot. While that's a nice plugin, they somehow forgot to make one for Fusion. So today, we'll look at how to make this effect from scratch in Fusion with nothing more than a few nodes and maybe a reactor add-on. Before we begin, I've linked my video on how to install a reactor. You'll want to install Xglow, my favorite glow for Fusion. Also, this is a beginner's tutorial in the sense of it being a beginner VFX technique. I assume that you have a bit of an understanding of how to work with nodes. Let's get started. So to start, you'll want to grab some footage. I'm no cinematographer, but I filmed some footage of a friend of mine swinging her lightsaber to help make this. If you'd like to download it, there's a link to the Patreon in the description. So to begin, let's start at the beginning and add a polygon node. Then we'll add a background node and attach the output of the polygon node into the mask input of the background node. And let's change the background node's color to white. And we'll make sure that the media out node is active. Now click on the polygon node. We're gonna go up here and choose linear. We're going to click once at the base of the lightsaber, and then again at the end, creating a straight line. We'll then wanna to go to the top bar and click on insert and modify. This will keep us from closing the uh, shape here. We want it to just stay a line. We don't want it to be a, a shape. The next thing we'll wanna do in order to see our shape is we'll drop down a merge node and plug that in. We won't see anything yet, but we'll go into the polygon node and we'll slowly increase the border width. Now to make fine adjustments, you can hold down shift and drag this out. Now, if you start to see that your lightsaber isn't lining up properly, you can come in here and move those around. We'll also give the mask a little bit of a soft edge but not too much. We want the core to be somewhat solid. Now we'll add in an XGlow node after our background node. Whoopsie, we'll move that down here, holding shift to drag that down and really reconnect this. Accidents happen. So now we're getting somewhere. It's a little overpowering, but we can adjust these settings here. Uh, I'd like to start with the threshold. So we'll move that up. Kind of drag it in a little bit tighter. We'll work on the gain a little bit. Now we'll be we'll be layering our glow, so we'll want this glow to stay pretty close to the core. So next in the color selection underneath the gradient, we're going to switch this to blue. That's in our case. In your case, it might be a different color. Alrighty, so after our X glow, we're going to add a normal glow. And bring that in a bit, turn it down, and we're going to change the color scale all the way up with blue. And now we're starting to layer our glows. Now after the merge node, we're gonna drop down another X glow. And we'll adjust our threshold again. Glow is often best done when you combine multiple glows into one. You end up with a more natural look. Another tip is to film the plate with real light coming from the prop lightsaber to cast glow onto your subject. This will really help to sell the effect. Now I, I will say that X-Glow is a very resource intensive add-on. When we begin to animate this, you may find that you'll need to disable it temporarily. You can bypass nodes by selecting the nodes and pressing Control or Command P. This will enable pass-through and the nodes won't be calculated. And one thing I almost missed is we also want to change the gradient here in this uh, second X glow node to blue again, or your lightsaber color of choice. So now we're getting somewhere. 
Now, another thing that we can do to this, kind of going back a little bit, if we go back to the glow node, we should be able to make this even more blue. Yeah, there we go. Now we're looking good. So finally, we'll begin animating. So we'll select the polygon node and we'll move forward in the timeline about two frames. It all depends on your footage and how fast it is in our case. Macy's swinging it pretty, pretty fast. So we might end up needing to go frame by frame, but we'll see. And we'll move it down. So we're just repositioning these. So that way it follows. And yeah, it looks like we'll have to go one by one. At least for certain segments. Now we're bringing it up. When you see this motion blur here, you're going to want to have it where the lightsaber is, not where it was. So in this case, we know she's swinging it up. So the lightsaber is going to go on the top part and not the not down here. Now sometimes it gets a little tricky to see. But in all honesty, you don't need to be super precise if somebody's swinging it around this fast because, I mean, this is going extremely quickly. And little foibles will be missed. Now, like I said, we're seeing this motion blur on the practical lightsaber, but there's none on ours. So we'll need to adjust that by going into the settings on the polygon node and enabling motion blur. It'll start off looking kind of bad, <laughs> but we can adjust these until the motion blur matches the real lightsaber. I found for this, I needed to turn the quality up to 20. And we also went with a 360 degree shutter angle. And if you have a GPU that you're using, you'll want to enable this wherever possible. So now we're looking pretty good. Now, because we're doing this in 2D and this lightsaber exists in 3D space, some of our motion blur is going to be a little off. But that's something that probably won't be noticed again due to the speed. If you were doing this for real, you'd take certain considerations into mind and kind of do things a little differently. But this is kind of just, you know, the fun, quick way of doing things. Now, motion blur, you may or may not want to turn off as you animate. It can be helpful to see where the motion blur is going, so it is something good to have on, but if you had to pick between the glow and the motion blur, I would try to keep the motion blur on, because that's going to be most helpful for figuring out if you have the right position going. Now, the eagle-eyed among you might have noticed that I didn't ask my talent not to swing the lightsaber behind her. So, if you were doing this for real, it would involve some rotoscoping. If you're on the free version of Resolve, I have a great tutorial about how to do just that. For these sorts of tasks, I'll typically use Mocha Pro. Not a sponsor. Yet? All right, so at this point, everything is pretty much set up to go. You'll need to go through the whole sequence, moving the points until they match up with the lightsaber. It's important to watch your motion blur and make sure it's matching up as best you can. At these speeds, it absolutely does not need to be perfect though. <laughs> if there was an easier way, I'd tell you about it. Most tracking software would buckle trying to track something moving this fast. This technique is a trial by fire of sorts for those wanting to get into VFX. If you aren't patient enough to animate the lightsaber, you might not enjoy what lies ahead of you. And once you've completed it, pat yourself on the back. I bet you just made something cool. Further steps to work on a shot like this would involve making sure the noise matches because right now our lightsaber beam is perfectly clean while our footage is not. The lazy way around this is if you have DaVinci Resolve Studio, you can denoise the entire fusion comp and then add in film grain during the color process. You can also eyeball it by adding noise in the fusion comp.
Now for the close-up shot of the lightsaber I showed in the short I had posted, that one also used heat distortion, which is an add-on from Reactor. I added that first to the beam prior to the merge, and I made everything really, really small. And I also made the seethe rate really high. For far away shots, this would probably be just a waste of computing power. At those speeds and from that distance, you probably wouldn't be able to make that subtle distortion out. And that's pretty much it. It's a simple effect, yet a lot of fun to do. You'll end up with some cool results. If you enjoyed that and want to see more, consider subscribing. I have a couple of VFX tutorials planned that I can't wait for you to see. Take care.